Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel. On today's video, well, I'm going to show you how to install a handle on a pocket door. The handle that I'm installing today is a circular handle, so we'll be using a door handle jig. Smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments section below. Let's get into this. All right, so I'm gonna be showing you today how to put this uh, round door handle into this pocket door. I prefer this one over the other style, which is essentially a, a cutout that goes like this on the door. I just find these operate a little better. Um, this is the finished piece that you see on the side and the same thing on the outside. Obviously, this is the inside with the lever. I got this from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. This finish is a satin nickel finish. A few tools you're gonna to need to do this is a measuring tape, a pencil, and um, I've got a, uh, a chisel, a sharp chisel, a drill. I've got the Irwin door handle jig. I've got screw some screwdrivers and a little hammer. You can use a regular hammer. I've got my finishing hammer here. So let's uh, get into this thing. Most of the tools that I'm using today, uh, I'm gonna put in the description just so you've got a reference as to what I'm using. So this Irwin door handle jig, it's got a few different options. So you can do a two and three eighths inch back set or a two and three quarter inch back set. And what that means is, it gives you the chance to put the hole where you want it. Most door handles, you gotta double check, but most door handles will accommodate both the two and three quarters and the two and three eighths back set. But I would double check before you commit to a hole. I'm just gonna check to see what this looks like here. And two and three quarters would be a little too far back for me. So I'm gonna go two and three eighths, which is pretty well what I use 99 times out of 100. So we've got the two and three eighths back set and we're, now we're gonna get our height. Typically, my door handles are 36 inches off the floor. So I'm about here. So I'll drop this down to here and center it on the mark. So your door handle kit comes with a bunch of little screws. You're just gonna wanna take a few of the ones with the point on them, and you're just gonna tack this door jig in. Be mindful that you will be using these holes for the, uh, the clasp and try to get them straight. Like don't go up and down like this off to a side. So you wouldn't want to use an impact drill for this or a drill of any kind really because if you torque these too tight you'll chew the uh, wood on the inside and then you're creating more problems it's fixable but why fix it if you don't have to the next step is you're going to put your hole saw from your Irwin door handle kit so this step is important um, when you're drilling through for your door again be mindful that you don't want to go on different angles try to stay nice and square and just keep it uh, level So when you've noticed that you've gotten most of the way through, you're not going to want to put too much pressure because you're going to tend to blow out the other side. So just back off on the pressure from the other side to finish it off. So you're done with this guy now. On to the smaller one. For the uh, little hole saws here, they come with these little holes. I find I've got a uh, flathead screwdriver, but I just grab the bottom of the hole, I put some pressure, and I just lift up on it. That's, I don't know, that's, I find the best way to remove these plugs from the hole saws. So we've got our small hole saw on, and now we're going to do this one here. Once you get the hole started, you can take the jig off. And I, we don't need the jig anymore. Keep the screws. Just get our hole drilled, and uh, that's a future me problem. Don't tell my wife I'm using a good vacuum. The trick is to these things is to install them the way they are before you chisel out your little, uh, your mortise. We're just gonna tack this guy on. Another tool I didn't mention you, that you were gonna need was this exacto uh, knife. All right, so I've got the pocket door in its pocket. And what you're gonna wanna do is get a nice sharp blade and just run it along the side. Nice and easy. It just, you don't want to push too hard. I'm just trying to mark it. It's just trying to, I'm making a line. So you're going to mark it all the way around. And there we go. So we'll back this guy off. And now you've got some outlines for the chisel too. So this is a 3 eighths of an inch four cinder bit. Um, it's really the best bit to use for this. I wouldn't use a spade bit or anything like that. 
you really got to use the Forstner bit for a nice clean cut. So what you're going to want to do is, is try to line up where exactly it's got to go. So I'm just turning the bit both ways. I got my, my center hole there and I'll do all four corners. The next step is I'm going to be sinking my Forstner bit about halfway through to this shoulder here to get deep enough. So you don't want to go too deep, obviously, but you don't want to tip of the day. Go deep enough where you don't have to do it again, but don't go too shallow where you have to do it twice. You're welcome. So next you're going to come around with your chisel and you're going to get these lines exactly where you want them to be. So I'm just setting a perimeter with my chisel. So I'm, I've dug it in on the bottom and I'm kind of rolling it on the line. Something like that. And I'll keep going. Now, a lot of people think you use your chisel like this, but really most of the time, 99 times out of 100, you're using it like that. So just take out what you need. And you don't even really need a hammer. I, this is pine, so it's a pretty soft wood. Just a few wax by hand could do it, but I find you get a little more control with the hammer. So we'll put our screws back in. Make sure our back set's at the right spot. Yeah, oh, I got it upside down. There's a little, it says up. If you go too tight, it'll inhibit the, the uh, mechanism from working. Now for the finishing plates. So they'll only go in one way. And I just want to make sure that on this side, that the teeth grab into the hole. There we go. And I'll take my set screws, which I should have opened before I had my hands full. I'll just tighten them up by hand a little bit just to set them in and then I'll tighten them up with my screwdriver and this is why I really like this uh, the round one over the one that takes the notch out of the door it's got like a true it's almost like a deadbolt and it's got this little piece that shoots up so and when your door is in your pocket you just slide them up and you can pull it out so it just locks back in place by pushing down and you lift up to engage it so it's not any more cheaper or more expensive uh, than the other one um, on the inside of the door you got a nice the nice little lever again if I get a nicer angle and same thing so it just tucks away so it's my go-to pocket door hardware the next step is putting this side in you'll notice there's a catch plate here and he fits over here and when it's locked it grabs behind the plate here and locks the door. If you had to lock it from the outside, you can put a, something flat like a coin in here and you can turn it from that side. But I've got a little wiggle here in my, in my door, so I'm gonna have to correct that. Notice these two, these two guides on the bottom of the door. And they just keep the door from moving in the pocket and from rubbing on the wood and wear and tear on the door. So. When I put this in, I actually probably should have made these pieces of pine a little bit wider. Now, I, uh, if I don't tighten these up this way, I'm gonna have trouble lining up with my catch on the other end. See, I've got a quarter of an inch there. It's still a lot. So I'm going to sneak them over just a hair and that'll probably be enough. So I'm gonna drill a pilot hole. And especially when you're getting that close to the edge, you definitely have to drill a pilot hole. And then I'm going to put this guy back in its place. There you go. So that tightened up my pocket quite a bit. And now we've got a more accurate tracking on the door. So let's get back to mortising this catch. So you're going to want to close the door with the catch open and mark the top, the bottom, and both sides. So this gives us a bit of a guideline as to where this catch is going to be. So we're going to take your catch, make sure it's nice and level. I'm going to do that just by 
measuring off the door jam. So I'm going to measure two and a quarter, two and a quarter. So there's nothing worse than getting all this done and looking at your catch and have it be crooked on the wall or on the door jam, I should say. I'm putting it on backwards and you'll see why in a second. We'll drill some pilot holes. And if you're not too confident with your marks, try it again. Looks good to me. So we'll grab our X-Acto knife, score the perimeter. Before we go ahead, I'm just gonna make a, a clearer mark of where this middle part is. We'll do the same thing with the Forstner bit. So before you get too far ahead, this uh, pocket door has a nice little, nice little pocket. Let's call it a pocket. It's going to go right there. That way, when you, because you're going to be drilling right through the door jam. So what we'll do is I'm going to center this thing from here to about here, and then I'll do the same the other way. Go width twice. So it's going to be about from here to here. And you could finish it off with a multi-tool, a drill bit. I'm gonna use the drill bit. It doesn't have to be pretty. So, let's remark our X-Acto knife line. Putting some pressure on the whole perimeter. Right here, and it's looking pretty good, except for that friggin', anyway. So, we got to make sure that we have a nice little recess for the pocket here. So let's put this guy in here. Try to fit this guy on top. I think we're at the right height, so let's put this guy in. There we go. Nice and flush. Let's see if it works. Like a charm. So I'm just going to take a little bit of spackling and fill this up and I'll clean up a few of the little chips I got in the paint. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. This has been uh, Pocket Door Handle 101. See you in the next one.